Hello everyone, and welcome back to our series of Star Wars Ahsoka episode recaps. Today we're diving deep into episode 3, and there's a lot to discuss. At the end of episode 2, the evil Shin Hadi and Merak were able to evade the capture of Ahsoka and Hera on Corellia, escaping on a transport ship carrying an enormous hyperdrive. Luckily, Hera was able to attach a tracking device to the transport just before it blasted into hyperspace, enabling them to track the ship to the planet Cetas. On the way, Ahsoka makes a pit stop to pick up Sabine, who has committed to becoming a Jedi, and is suited up for action in her badass Mandalorian armor. They blast off for Cetas, where Morgan, Balin, Shin, and Merak are waiting. Which brings us to Episode 3, A Time to Fly. And if you're a fan of the original Star Wars movie, Episode 4, A New Hope, you're going to enjoy this episode. Dave Filoni has crafted a plot that's a fun homage to the original film, with Jedi training, exciting dogfights, and the discovery of a mysterious new Imperial ship. As the episode opens, Sabine and Hu Yang are making good use of their downtime on the voyage to Cetas by developing Sabine's lightsaber skills. Hu Yang has broken out two extra arms for the drills, and he resembles a more refined version of General Grievous from the prequels. Hu Yang, with his droll sense of humor and inability to sugarcoat the truth, is giving Sabine no love for her efforts, deeming them barely passable. And he maintains that Sabine is the worst Jedi candidate he's ever seen super motivating. Ahsoka takes over the training session, and here we get a Jedi Force training sequence that feels like it's straight out of A New Hope. Ahsoka has Sabine don a blast helmet that inhibits her vision and makes her use the Force to fend off her attacks, much like the drill Obi-Wan Kenobi puts Luke Skywalker through on their journey to Alderaan. While Sabine has some success, she has difficulty connecting to and using the Force in combat, and she gives in to her frustration and anger. We cut to the New Republic fleet, where Hera makes a welcome appearance in the episode. She dials up a hologram conference call to Mon Mothma and her Senate committee, where she updates them on her investigation into Morgan Elsbeth. She shares the news that Grand Admiral Thrawn may be alive, and that Morgan is close to discovering his location. But the politics in the Star Wars galaxy are just as frustrating as they are here on Earth. The senators, who have no stomach for another galactic war, rebuff her impassioned pleas to pursue the investigation further. Back on the T6, Ahsoka and Sabine are debriefing after their training session. Sabine expresses her frustrations with not being able to feel and use the Force. Ahsoka shares her unique perspective on the nature of the Force, which challenges the traditional Jedi path, emphasizing its accessibility to anyone and the importance of focus, discipline, and hard work over pure talent. The democratization of the Force is an interesting concept that we don't hear a lot about in the Star Wars universe, where midichlorians and genetics seem to determine each individual's Force abilities. Hera calls in and relays the disappointing news that the Senate committee did not approve her support mission. Hera's transmission cuts out, and the trio discover that their communications are being jammed. Ahsoka, Sabine, and Hu Yang are on their own, without the hope of reinforcements. They drop from hyperspace and now are into a super fun dogfight, as two squadrons of enemy fighters, led by Shin and Merak, attack from the rear. Sabine sprints to man the tail gun, and here we get our second big nod to A New Hope, in a scene reminiscent of the Millennium Falcon's first iconic TIE fighter battle. As Sabine fires laser blasts from the tail gun while bantering with Ahsoka, it feels like Luke Skywalker and Han Solo could be right there in the ship with them. All we need are a couple of extra turret guns. When Sabine takes down her first fighter and shouts that she got one, it brings back all the feels for the original Star Wars fans. And then, in the final homage to A New Hope, Ahsoka and Hu Yang get their first glimpse of Morgan's enormous hyperspace ring. It has a similar feel to when Luke, Han, and Obi-Wan spot the Death Star for the first time. You almost expect to hear Obi-Wan say, That's no moon, it's a space station. That's no moon, it's a space station. Followed by Luke muttering, I have a very bad feeling about this. Very bad feeling about this. Hu Yang asks Ahsoka to get closer to the hyperspace ring so he can get an accurate scan. She complies, but Morgan is having none of it. She peppers the T6 with blasts from her enormous laser cannons. Hu Yang completes his scan, but it's too late. One of the blasts hits home, and the T6 is out of commission. A sitting duck for Shin and her squadron of fighters. 
And here we get something we've never seen before in the Star Wars live-action universe. As Ahsoka emerges onto the ship's hull in a stylish custom spacesuit, activates her lightsabers, and takes on the fighter squadron by herself. In a thrilling sequence, she catapults herself into space, flipping end over end, and slashes the oncoming ship's wing completely off. Take that, Luke Skywalker! Luckily, Sabine is able to get the ship back online, and our heroes lose the fighters in a pod of massive space whales called Pergils. They set down on CTOS to make repairs, and Episode 3 ends with Balin sending a team of his goons and assassin droids to take them out. That's it for today! What did you think of Ahsoka Episode 3? Share your thoughts in the comments below! And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to get notified of our next upload! Thank you for watching, and may the Force be with you!